if you just started call of dragons and you want to know the best faction the best heroes to focus on and how you can progress and level up your city faster all while avoiding mistakes then this is the video for you call of dragons might have just come out but i first played this game about six months ago when the initial beta dropped and i've also been playing rise of kingdoms every single day for over four years now which is essentially the predecessor to call of dragons so today i'm gonna help you guys get started on the right path here if you just started playing call of dragons now the first thing we have to go over is what exactly should your goal be here in call of dragons obviously this is a city builder game it's a war game it's a massive online multiplayer game and when you first start playing there's a lot of different things that you can do there's a bunch of different quests and events and honestly the world here is massive so it can be really easy to get overwhelmed and not know exactly what your first goal should be and that would be getting your city hall to level 25 while minimizing the amount of resources that you have stolen from you now if you've ever played games like world of warcraft or final fantasy you'll know that some of the most exciting and best content that those games have to offer come at max level that's when you get the best raids and the best pvp experience and the same is true with call of dragon you want to get your city hall to level 25 this way you have access to the highest tier of troops and the most amount of troops that you could bring into the battlefield whether it's pve content or pvp content in big open scale wars but this is a multiplayer game after all there are other players here in the world and with a limited number of resources available on the map there's the possibility that you could end up getting attacked or wanting to attack somebody else which is why i mentioned you want to get to 25 with the least amount of resources lost along the way and the number one way that you can accomplish that second part is by giving players as few reasons as possible to attack you so that means one diplomacy two making a lot of friends and three don't have too many resources just sitting around available for plundering which brings me to my first tip of the video and that is as you're playing the game you're going to be getting resources in the form of items here you could see 10,000 wood and this 10,000 wood item is safe and sound in my inventory if it's in item form nobody can take it but if I click this button to gain 10,000 gold now you see it goes in the top right corner and if you have too many excess resources here players are going to want to attack you so the first tip is never use these resource items unless you're about to spend them on a building upgrade training troops or on research for your account you want to have as little resources here as possible until the late game now don't worry when you first start the game you're actually going to have a beginner's city shield this is that bubble that you see around me that's all shiny you get this for the first 48 hours which which means other players literally cannot attack you after that 48 hour mark though you're either gonna have to use another peace shield or join an alliance make friends and become a target that people just don't want to hit either because they like you or because there's no reason to because you have no resources okay so you know what your main goal is and you know how you have to achieve it now you might be thinking where is the best place to achieve this goal and by that i mean what is the best server to play on here in call of dragons as you can see here there's a list of a bunch of different servers that you have access to and most likely your first character is going to automatically be made on whatever the newest server is but the best time to play on a server is within the first day or two of that server coming out as you can see here the latest server in the game is server 29 and this server has been around for four days and 12 hours which means players who started in this server on day one have four days and 12 hours of progress all ready so if you start there now you are four days behind and there's also some really important events that happen at the very beginning of a server that are only around for a limited time and you want to have the most amount of time possible to complete these events because it's what's going to give you a ton of free things so here you can see royal ranking this is based on increasing your power within the first five or so days of the server being open i think it's actually six or seven but what you'll see here is as you're progressing your account which you're going to be doing no matter what server you're in 
you're going to be getting free gold keys and free artifact keys amongst other things like free resources and free speed ups and if you get all the way to the maximum prize not only are you going to get a bunch of gems along the way which is the premium currency here in call of dragons you're also going to unlock thea thea i don't know if i pronounced that right but you're going to get your hands on a free legendary hero in the game we're going to talk more about the best heroes in the game later in the video so make sure you stay tuned for that but anytime you can get your hands on a free legendary is it's it's going to be a good time another event to keep in mind is the road to glory here you can see that you're going to get free stuff just by playing the game like you normally would log in for two days claim there we go i just got a couple of artifact keys for free i didn't do anything other than log in here you get free speed ups for your city expansion or visiting villages along the map and for the first five days of the server or you joining that server you're actually going to get new quests every single day and they're all going to be things that you're just generally going to be doing anyway leveling up your hospital defeating the darklings out in the open fields this is free really good resources speed ups and things that you need to progress your account oh look at that i unlocked my boy craig this dude he this dude okay that's that's not probably a healthy maneuver to be making right there but uh craig is a free epic commander that you're going to be getting by participating in this road to glory event and while you may be excited to get your hands on some legendary heroes at the beginning of the game you're really going to want to focus on epics as well so getting your hands on a free epic here is going to be really nice too on the topic of free epics we have to talk about another event that comes around at the very beginning of a server's lifespan and that is eliana's crisis okay essentially what this event is it's around for about four days and essentially when you defeat darklings in the open field that's the pve content here in call of dragons they have a chance to drop these event items that are called abandoned puppets and when you use these puppets you're going to have access to attacking eliana and when you do so you're going to gain shards of her and she is as you may have guessed another epic commander now she's actually really important for the beginning of the game and we're going to talk more about eliana later in the video but just keep in mind that in a new server this is a way that you can get another epic hero for free okay now that you've picked your server i'm sure you're wondering what is the best faction here in call of dragons you have three options you have the green faction spring wardens you have the blue faction league of order and you have the red faction the wild river now the first thing that i want to say about factions in this might be a little bit boring but i highly recommend that you pick whichever faction you think looks the most appealing and exciting for you i know a lot of people are interested in min maxing and picking whatever is meta or whatever is the top tier and i understand that but when it comes down to factions just know that you can change this later in the game so it's not set in stone forever the second thing is that these factions have a lot of things in common they overlap quite a bit and the third thing is that the best faction for late game meta pvp might not be the best faction for leveling up in the early game so there's a chance you're going to want to change later down the line anyway so i wouldn't stress about this decision too much if you like mystical elves okay go ahead and pick spring wardens if you like the high fantasy magic of the humans then go ahead and pick league of order and if you like the traditional just smash things with big rocks and fire then go with the orcs of wild river with that being said i will tell you which faction that i think is probably the best for you in the early game because there are a couple of differences as far as the hero that you start with the best hero i think is spring wardens guanwin but i don't think that makes spring wardens the best pick the reason for that is even though she is the best starting hero you're gonna get access to guanwin relatively easily just by opening keys in the tavern or by getting her from your daily quests and looking at just the hero doesn't give you the complete package so here you can see that the spring wardens also give you five percent march speed when you see the word legion just know that that means your army's out in the open field okay so your legion gets five percent march speed and five percent heal speed now that's good but it's not great for the beginning of the game remember you need to focus on getting resources and leveling up your city this is more for fighting now we also can look at their gathering transport units they have the work elk these gathering units march faster to resource points which is cool but to me that's not the most exciting benefit because they don't gain march speed when they come home from that resource point and yeah time is money but 
I don't know. That's just not that exciting of a buff to me. If we look at the league of order, you can see that they have 3% magic defense for your armies and they have 10% overall gathering speed. Now that for me is much more exciting. The 10% gathering speed is going to be very important in the early game for getting all those resources that you desperately need to level up your city hall. Furthermore, if we take a look at the workhorses here, you could see that for a transport unit, they actually have a higher load capacity when gathering, which means that you're going to be able to just carry more resources with this unit than with the units from spring warden also waldir for whatever it's worth is a pretty good damage dealing hero and he's pretty well routed you can use him for pvp pve and all sorts of things and finally with wilderberg you see you get three percent physical attack and 10 percent destruction engineering now destruction engineering essentially what that means is the speed with which you can destroy the fortifications of your enemies in pvp combat and again we're talking about the early game what's going to help us develop faster and this doesn't really fit the bill now i will say that their work rhinos are probably the best of the best when it comes to transport units because they actually gain extra resources when they completely exhaust a resource point so they literally just get more resources for free which is good but in general as a complete package i think league of order is probably the best early game faction to pick because again there's a lot of benefits here and eventually you're going to get guanwin for free anyway all right once you've picked your server and your faction the first thing that i want you to do is to join Join an alliance okay what you saw me do there is help all the members of my alliance with a single click joining an alliance has a ton of benefits for your account and you are absolutely going to progress in the game much much faster if you are in a large an active alliance there's a few reasons for this first of all there's technology the benefits here are huge okay first of all they literally give you more stats so you just have higher attack higher march speed and all sorts of things just by being in an alliance and contributing to this alliance technology which i will do right now you also straight up just gain more experience for your heroes when you're battling in the open field so you're gonna level up all your heroes faster by being in an alliance and furthermore you're also gonna have advantages from a development and economic economic perspective you're going to have access to alliance resource nodes you're also going to gain more resources within an alliance territory and there's a ton of other benefits here as you can see there are four different trees for alliance technology here in call of dragons so there's just so many benefits from a technological perspective but that's only a piece of the pie if you take a look here I actually have a common dark chest available to me that I can claim for free now I didn't do anything in particular to earn that chest but somebody else in my alliance did this this is called a darkling fort and this is another piece of pve content where you can only defeat this darkling fort by rallying it with your alliance meaning you can literally not defeat this without the help of an alliance and when you do not only are you going to get a ton of really nice benefits you're going to get free gold keys silver keys and a bunch of things that you need to progress your account and your heroes but it's also going to give a dark chest to everybody in your alliance so when you're offline and your alliance members are online defeating these forts you're going to log back into a bunch of free chests here but not only that the rare chests occur when people in your alliance make purchases so even if you're free to play there's nothing that you have to do you don't have to spend anything but for example if somebody purchases the blaze of glory you can see here that the entire alliance gets a stone chest that's what i'm pointing at here and this stone chest can contain gems honor points speed ups resources and everybody in the alliance gets it if one person makes that purchase now later in the video if you're interested in bundles we'll talk more about that probably at the very end but the gifts here aren't even the best part the best part about being in an alliance is the help chances available okay so whenever you go to upgrade a building or a research for example let's go ahead and do it you'll see that when you're in an alliance you'll have this green hand shaking looking emoji above it okay and when you click that a help request is sent to all alliance members so if there's anybody in my alliance online right now and they click the help button what that's going to do is reduce the building or research time for me at no cost to them by one percent per person that clicks the button or by one minute whichever is higher so if i have 11 help chances available and everybody online presses that help button that means it's going to reduce the amount of time that it takes to build a particular building by 11 percent and that's not to mention that when you max out this building it goes up to 30 okay and that might not seem like a lot when your buildings only take like 20 or 30 minutes to upgrade but next month when you're upgrading buildings and it takes two weeks 
weeks okay 15 or 20 percent of two weeks of time is a significant amount so you can see how this will compound tremendously and will help you level up really fast in the early game absolutely for free okay next let's talk about the best heroes that you should be focusing on here in the early game of call of dragon the answer to you guys is going to be really really boring and i do apologize in advance but there are about six heroes that i do want to focus on here in this video and they fall into two categories there are gathering heroes and there are peacekeeping heroes okay gathering heroes as their name implies means that they have access to to the gathering talent tree and they have at least one of their skills related to gathering and what that means is when you send them out to gather resources out in the open field they have an advantage in doing so whether that means they gather faster than other heroes in the game or they gain more resources from the same actions or they can just carry more resources back to your city there's a benefit to doing that when we talk about peacekeeping heroes they have access to the peacekeeping talent tree and this is a hero that is focused primarily on defeating the darklings in the open field now remember darklings are the pve content in the game and defeating darklings is a primary way that you're going to get access to free speed ups free gems free resources and experience to level up the rest of your heroes throughout the game so you're gonna be defeating darklings every single day and these heroes that we're gonna talk about are the best at doing that first let's start with the gathering heroes we have Chachka and we have Kella these are both rare heroes in the game that means they are the blue color and they're the easiest to obtain Kella's second skill is her most important it says she has a 15 percent gathering speed bonus and a 10% gold gathering speed bonus as well. So for gold, that's a total of 25% gathering speed, which is nice. Her third skill is her second most important. And that says it increases her load capacity by 30%. So she can carry 30% more resources in the open field than any other commander that doesn't have this bonus, which is really, really good. If you get any of the universal blue tokens in the early game, you probably should be putting them into Kella until her second and maybe even her third skills are completely at five for those of you that don't know five is the highest level that you can bring a skill here in call of dragons if you don't have Kella yet don't worry you're going to get her pretty easily in the game you're going to get access to her from a bunch of different ways mainly the tavern the trail store the exploring throughout the world so yeah you'll have access to her no problem next is Chachka. I hope I'm saying that right his second skill is also his best skill and this is not as good as Kella but it gives you 10 percent universal gathering speed bonus and 10 percent or gathering speed bonus you also get on the second skill 10 percent load capacity so whereas Kella gets a faster gathering speed and a higher load Chachka has all those things on one skill so he has the other three skills freed up to just do other things if he wants to so he's a little bit more well-rounded but primarily you're going to be using him for gathering now there's a bunch of ways that you can get access to him as well but he's actually a lot easier to get than Kella because you can get him for free in the single player campaign you can access that by clicking the two little crossed swords down here and that's going to bring you to the dragon trail now the dragon trail as you can see here there are a bunch of different levels and you can defeat them up to three stars and when you do so you're going to get a currency called dragon glass and this dragon glass can be used in the store that you can see down here and at the time of recording this Chachka is permanently in this store he will always be here and I recommend in the early game to spend as much of your dragon glass as you need to to get his second skill to five now I know what you're saying Omniarch there's a legendary hero right here why am I not focusing on that well great news you're gonna get to her right after that okay but the sooner you max the gathering skills on Chachka and Kella the sooner that you can just forget about them because they are finished for the rest of the game and the sooner that you get them to five the more resources that you're going to be able to gather and progress your account faster so focus first on Chachka then go and focus on this legendary hero which we're going to talk about in just a moment now arguably the best gathering hero in the game is called Pan and honestly I think the design of this hero looks really cool but their second skill gives you 20 percent gathering speed bonus and 20 percent wood gathering speed bonus as well now this is hands down the best gathering hero in the entire game and it's only an epic okay it's not even a legendary and this is statistically and objectively your best option okay which is really great news because you're going to get access to pan for free just by playing the game opening chest in the tavern and things of that nature and then finally we have to talk about indus and this is the legendary hero that you saw in the shop before and she you can only get three of her shards per day but 
great news you're going to be able to max her out for free in call of dragons and as you guessed it her second skill is a gathering skill it gives you 20 percent gathering speed bonus and 10 percent wood gathering speed bonus as well so this is literally just a worse version of pan's second skill which is interesting because pan is epic and indus is legendary now indus is doing a lot of other things that are a lot more supportive and th there's a lot to love about this hero but just for the purposes of this video indus is a hero that you do want to focus on for gathering faster it's going to progress your account faster as well circling back to the peacekeeping heroes okay we'll talk about guanwin first because those of you that went with the green faction are just going to have access to her right out of the gate and you can see on her second skill that she deals 15 percent more damage to darklings and dark creatures which could make the difference between defeating them or not remember in the early game it's going to be pretty hard to take down some of the higher level darklings so 15 percent more damage is very significant the higher the level of the darkling you can defeat the more rewards that you're going to get from them which means you can progress your account faster and it sort of snowballs from there you can also get her from the tavern universal hero tokens trail store exploring throughout the map there's a bunch of ways that you can get her and again she is epic so she'll be relatively easy to obtain and getting that second skill to five should be pretty easy next let's talk about Eliana we already discussed her earlier because well you get her only from that event that we discussed which is why it's important that you start in the right server but her second skill literally makes her the best epic peacekeeping hero in the game she gets 25 percent bonus damage when fighting darklings and dark creatures so literally better than guanwin she's just straight up better at least for pve and of course you can pair these two heroes together and really just shred them in the open field but besides that there are three legendary heroes that are peacekeepers you have bakshi you have nika and you also have lilia now bakshi you can only obtain right now through the lucky spin event it's an event where there's a wheel you spin the wheel and you have a chance to get shards of this hero so a lot of players won't have access to him right away or at all uh nika is a hero that you can get from the tavern so she's going to be pretty rare but eventually you're going to get your hands on her and unfortunately Lilia is a hero that you can only obtain by purchasing bundles that are in the honorary membership shop okay this is if you've played other city builders this is essentially your VIP system it's called honorary membership or honor and you can see here that the ownership level zero bundle does come with 10 Lilia tokens you also get her for your first purchase in the game so you buy anything and you get 10 tokens of her you can at least unlock her however if you're completely free to play you don't have access to her at all which is a bummer now the three legendary heroes that are focused on peacekeeping all have the same second skill which is 30 percent bonus damage to darklings and dark creatures so it is objectively better than any other hero in the game but only by five percent over Ileana and I think that in the late game that's really not going to make that much of a difference so I wouldn't worry about it too much I will say though that Lilia is definitely good at other things as well and she can be used for PvP especially with a hero like Waldir so she does have a, a little bit more to her kit than just peacekeeping so keep that in mind she can be pretty good okay next let's talk about which of these buildings should you be focusing on leveling up first okay obviously we've discussed leveling up your city hall as fast as possible but you'll see here that there are some prerequisites so you can't just only level up this building you will have to level up your wall and in order to do that you're gonna have to level up your hospital as well as some of the resource production buildings so those buildings are a given you have to level those up no matter what but there are two other buildings that I want you to focus on besides just your city hall. And that is the Alliance center and your research building, the college of order. As soon as you progress your city hall to the next level, the first thing you should do is upgrade these two buildings. Why? Because upgrading the Alliance center is going to increase the number of help chances that you have, which means the sooner you level this up, the more other buildings you're going to get helps on for free. Okay. That's one additional help for every other building that you're going to level up after you do the Alliance center. So you're literally going to level up your other buildings faster by doing this one first. And for the college of order, this is going to increase the speed with which you complete your research. So if you level up this building as soon as you possibly can, that means that every research that you do after that upgrade is complete is going to literally just be faster. Okay. And it goes all the way up to 25%, which is really significant. While we're on the topic of research, let's talk about which research you should focus on here in the early game. Now, as you can see, if I would just move my head, there are 
two different branches of technology there's economic technology and there is military technology it may be tempting to go all in on massive damage and trust me I get it this is a war game and I want to do that too but in the early game focus all of your efforts on economic technology and in particular there's a few here that are massive okay not only if you go through this you can read these most of these give you more resources or gathering speed and things like that all of that is super important for leveling up your other buildings because you're going to need a lot of resources to do that but a couple of the key researches here are architecture there's a few different levels of this this gives you 15 percent building speed so focus on this first the sooner you finish this the faster you're going to upgrade the rest of the buildings throughout the rest of the game in the same vein as this there is a technology called scholarship and this is going to give you 10 percent research speed so if you focus this one first that means the rest of the researches that you do are going to just go by quicker you're going to be able to research things faster just by focusing on this one before the rest of them now if you continue going on here you can see that there is architecture 2 which goes all the way up to 35 percent extra building speed and that does stack with the first one and there's scholarship 2 and this goes all the way up to an additional 15 percent research speed and that stacks with the first one so those four you want to focus on absolutely but you also want to focus on a couple of things like military leadership this is going to give you more experience for your heroes when you're defeating the pve content in the game that is the darklings okay so five percent extra experience that's just going to level up your heroes faster and a higher hero level means you're going to bring more troops to the battlefield and more troops means you have a stronger army so it's a no-brainer you want to level up those heroes as fast as you can additionally weak points over here just increases the damage that you deal to those darklings which means you're going to defeat them faster take fewer losses and you're going to be able to defeat higher level darklings by doing that as well now if you get to a point where you just can't progress any farther in the dragon trail again this is the single player campaign mode if you just can't progress any farther or you finally found a really high level darkling that you just can't defeat that's when you might want to consider leveling up some of your military technology maybe start focusing on it until you unlock the next tier of unit okay there are up to five tiers of units here in this game you start with tier one units then you unlock tier two which are just stronger versions of your units then you have tier three tier four tier five and a special tier five unit at the very end this will depend on the actual faction that you pick so this will change for you depending but go through the military technology just to break down those walls that you might be hitting in your pve progression otherwise focus all on economy two more texts that i want to just really quickly point out and you can't avoid these so you'll have to do them anyway but stamina and breath control are really important you want to get these to five as soon as you can as well because this will increase not only the max cp that you can hold but also the recovery speed of that cp and if you don't know what cp is it's called command points okay that is the little green bar that you see around your hero icon up in the top left corner here you can see minus 1200 of 1200 it's completely maxed out and this is the resource or the currency that you use to defeat the darklings in the open field okay if i come over here attacking this darkling will actually cost me cp which means you can't just defeat darklings all day for free obviously people would just be playing 24 7 if they did that so having more cp and having this regenerate faster means you can actually get more of the free resources that you get from defeating the darklings so once again economic technology is going to help you progress your account faster but and this is really important okay the beginning technologies here at, at the very start of this cone whether it's economy or military right at the very beginning here okay you can actually get these technologies absolutely for free so if i click on infantry it says that it costs 5,000 gold and 5,000 wood to get it to level one and it also takes 15 minutes now that's not that high of a requirement and with alliance helps this will probably go by very quickly but you don't actually have to spend any of that at all because of the scout camp okay now the tutorial tells you about scouting at the very beginning of the game and it's really self-explanatory but if you zoom out on the map you can see that the entire map is covered in mist okay this doesn't look like much of a map to me and that's because I can't see anything so the way that you get rid of that mist is you click on it and you explore it with your scouts you send them out revealing the entire map is going to be super important but as your scouts are going around the map they're going to discover things around there some of them are going to be villages some are going to be locations and there's also the other tab okay and here you're going to see different camps that my scout has found throughout their travels so if we take a look here this is a trader camp I can either choose gems or mana this is literally free this is 
free premium currency that you can get i would pretty much always pick gems in this scenario it's only five but free gems are free gems now this camp is going to give me a free research here i can either pick architecture one or arcane knowledge one of course you guys know we are going to go with the economic technology that is boom level four for free i didn't spend any resources or speed ups to get that technology now look getting up to level five is going to take three hours or 160k of each of these resources and if you keep going through the different scout reports you're going to get just more of these technologies absolutely for free now you're not going to get access to some of the late game technologies for free so don't get too excited but this is a cute little uh cute little tip a cute little hack where you can kind of get these early techs for free so don't bother wasting your resources it's also worth noting that if you go to the villages that your scouts discover they're also going to give you some free stuff depending on what you'd say to them so here i picked just a random answer and they gave me free speed ups and 10,000 wood so again the scout camp is going to be super important to progressing your account for free we can go to the next nearby village we click that button and it moves us over to another village that we found at some point and i visit them here and boom let's say we click this top option i get five minutes of speed ups and ten thousand gold so utilize these locations that your scouts discover to progress your account a little bit faster okay next let's talk about where you should spend your gems this is the premium currency in the game but the great news is if you look here in the top right corner i have 5015 gems and i haven't spent anything on this account at all which means you will still get thousands of gems for free just by playing call of dragons now at the beginning of the game you get access to more gems at first and then later on you start to get fewer and fewer but when you get access to these gems what should you be spending them on right they're so precious and you have so few of them that you don't want to make a mistake and spend them somewhere where you shouldn't have well the number one thing that you should spend them on especially if you're a free to play player is on the second permanent builder okay if you click on your halfling house you're gonna see that there's a regular building queue and then there's a second building queue and at the beginning of the game they're going to give you temporarily a second building queue for free you can see here that i actually have a countdown timer it's for 48 hours and eventually that's going to go away the good news is that you can unlock this permanently with either a five dollar bundle or five thousand gems so remember i didn't spend anything on this game so you can absolutely do this relatively easily and early in the beginning of the game for free as a free to play player. And this effectively doubles the building speed of your entire account for the rest of the game. You never have to worry about it. You will always have two builders going at the exact same time. And I shouldn't have to say this, but whenever you log off, you want to make sure that two things are building always forever. That's just, that's how you want it to be. You don't want to waste any time just because you're away from the game. Doesn't mean that you can't have things building while you're gone. So this is priority number one. Now we'll talk about bundle purchases in just a moment, but if you're a low spender, I would say doing the $5 bundle. I mean, that's some of the best value you can get in the game. So go that route instead. But the second place that you should be spending your gems is on your honorary membership level. Okay. This is for a couple of reasons one your daily gifts are going to get better as your honorary membership level increases and i'm just going to cut right to the chase you want to get to level eight as soon as possible this is because you get a second research queue permanently unlocked so this is the same thing as the builder queue except now you have double the research so you are again effectively doubling the amount of research that you can do at the same time which is going to allow you to progress your account much faster than people that didn't get here first on top of that you have a ton of other buffs here okay so you're actually going to just get more research speed more resources gathering speed building speed and all sorts of other things but you also gain one shard of a legendary hero every single day level eight is the first time that this happens if you go to level seven or beyond it's still the epic tokens but level eight you get one legendary token and as you can imagine the legendaries in this game are some of the most powerful heroes in the game they're the hardest to get so that makes sense and the fact that you can get one per day guaranteed is huge on top of that you get some other stuff too so you get resources speed ups and stuff like that so level eight of your honorary membership is the second place you should be spending your gems and you can see here this plus button this is where you can literally just spend gems it's a one-to-one -one ratio so five thousand gems is 5,000 honor points. I think getting to level eight is like 35,000 honor points, if I'm not mistaken. So that would be 35,000 gems 
plus the 5,000 for the building queue. That's 40 K. Okay. So it's, it's a lot, but you're going to work there over time. So I wouldn't get too stressed out about it. And you definitely can do this free to play. And finally, the last thing I want to talk about in this video is which bundles give you the best value for what you're spending. And I know a lot of people are free to play and this game is absolutely free. And I think you can really enjoy the game without spending anything at all. But if you want to get the most value, there are definitely some bundles that are better to purchase in the early game than in the late game. Now, one thing to know is that your first few purchases, you're going to have access to this purchase payback, which means as you buy more gems, you're going to get free things that you wouldn't normally get. So your initial purchases in the game are going to give you way more value than your later purchases. And if you buy the right things, you're going to be off to a really great start. Now, the first thing I already mentioned is the worker bundle. Okay. For $5, you're doubling your building speed. You're getting gems, you're getting speed ups. It's it's, this is the best, I think $5 you can spend in the entire game. Besides that, there are two monthly packs. Okay. There's a $3 pack and a $5 pack. And what this does is honestly, I think the $5 pack is better because you literally get double the rewards for not double the price. Okay. It, it's just that simple. It's, it's, it's just the math. But when you spend the $5, you get 1,500 gems, which is literally more gems than what you get for $5. So right away, you're just literally, even if it stops there, you're, you're already ahead, but every single day that you log in, you're going to get 400 gems and you're going to get a universal artifact key every single day and artifacts. We didn't even talk about them in this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified because we will be talking about artifacts in a later video and you don't want to miss that these are really huge but you're also going to get speed ups and resources and basic cp recovery every single day remember cp is how you defeat the pve content which in turn gives you a bunch more rewards so for five dollars this is an absolute slam dunk value you definitely should consider this if you are a spender beyond that is the growth fund okay now the growth fund there's actually a free tier up top here so as you progress your city hall you're going to get a bunch of free rewards from the growth growth fund anyway but when you unlock the growth fund you'll have access to the gem rewards and here you can get 82,000 gems for ten dollars now about half of them are locked behind the final city hall level so this is a long-term purchase you're going to get these gems over time as you progress through the game now one thing you could do is just literally wait until your city hall 24 and about to progress to 25 and then you buy this growth fund and then you just claim all the gems all at once and then you don't even have to worry about oh well what if i stop playing the game at some point and then i wasted the money but eighty-two thousand gems if we look at the gem market here twenty-five thousand gems is a hundred dollars so to get eighty-two thousand for ten dollars is like an absolutely ridiculous amount of value next we can talk about the daily deals and here these have three different bundles okay and what's interesting is and i assume that this is for the first purchase only but there's a three dollar bundle a two dollar bundle and a one dollar bundle but if you buy all three of them at the same time you actually get a discount now right now that value for all three bundles is equivalent to the three dollar bundle so clearly you would just buy all three but you're getting some really good stuff here primarily you're gaining shards of legendary heroes okay now later in the game you'll get access to pick whichever one of these legendary heroes you want at the beginning of the game velen is the one that is default and i think at the very start of a server you cannot change this but eventually you will have the ability to change it to other heroes that you might be interested in some of which like madeline right here were available for the lucky spin event okay so this does give you access to some really good heroes for a pretty cheap investment but on top of that you're going to get a gold key you're going to get a bunch of speed ups gems and honor points things that you really need for the progression of your account and keep in mind no matter what your first purchase is you are going to unlock Lilia that is the legendary hero that is pretty good for both PvP and especially for PvE and I think that if you are a relatively low spender you can consider coming into the honorary membership shop and buying more of her shards from these exclusive bundles they're going to give you other things as well like a bunch of different vestals like you're actually just gaining troops from this but also resources and things along those lines as well so definitely something to consider and finally if you do want to spend a little bit more in the game and you are interested in buying a bundle the best one to go with at the beginning of a server is called new beginning bundle if you compare this bundle to some of the other great value bundles in the game the value here is just insane okay you can see you get nine hours of speed ups 12 of the 15 minute speed ups and 50 of the five minute speed ups as well as a bunch of resources over here now if we take a look at something like city of hope you only get six of the one hour speed ups 
28 of the five hour speed ups and 245 of the one minute speed ups and far less resources you get like three times the resources here plus a bunch more speed ups the value is just much much better with this bundle than any other bundle that you can get in the great value now the downside is I'm pretty sure you can only buy this bundle to the maximum tier one time and if you click the I here it says this bundle will be removed when the current season ends so there's a little bit of FOMO here okay this bundle is not going to be around forever I know that for sure because I never bought this bundle and it is not available on my other character so I don't know when exactly this bundle goes away but it is definitely the best early game bundle that you can buy if you are interested in spending a little bit more in the game for me personally let's say you only have $20 to spend I would say get the $5 builder bundle get the $10 growth fund and get the $5 monthly pack and you're going to get an insane amount of value as long as you're playing the game every day and that's pretty much going to do it for the beginner guide as I mentioned throughout the video I'm going to be posting more call of dragons content here on YouTube so consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you're notified the next time that I upload a call of dragons video comment down below your thoughts on call of dragons have you tried it yet are you enjoying it if you have I would love to hear from you guys down in the comment section below and while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps push this video out into the algorithm so other call of dragons players might see it with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace